Here's the uh, bolt posts that hold on the uh, the coil in the uh, the back there. I'm going to remove the valve cover on the passenger side next. Uh, the uh, 10 millimeter was too big, so you actually have to use an SAE 3 8 to uh, to take these bolts off. There's four of them. Okay, so we're going to mark that distributor to the uh, back of the firewall with that mark back there too. It may be over marking, but this is so critical that we don't want to take any chances. Uh, we we'll make sure that that goes back in and we don't have it a tooth off. You see how that rotates counterclockwise when it's lifted. So we want to, that's very critical that this is uh, put back the same way. Uh, don't want to have that off. Yep. What is it, about a one foot, 10 inch shaft on that thing? I had just taken the EGR valve off because uh, I needed to remove that radiator hose right there. It looks like a bypass pipe that goes into the water pump. Anyway, uh, that was a pain to get off for sure, but a lot easier once I had taken the EGR valve off. Yeah, bolts are removed um, from the uh, intake with a uh, 13 millimeter socket so it's actually ready to come off at this point there's what it looks like with the intake manifold off I have a lot of cleaning up to do there's a lot of sludge in there not bad though but you can see in the back there that corner right there is where it was leaking and you can see how that Gasket was causing the problem. Well, there it is. Upper and lower intake manifold. Cleaned it up a bit. Oh, I noticed that I, uh, I did not have to remove this piece right here. For the fuel lines just disconnect it from the back here um, the bottom of this looks pretty good keep in mind this engine only had 37,000 miles on it when this problem showed up which shows that it's not so much miles but age could be a problem too so it does look very clean. Not much cleaning up to do. It's got a little bit of pitting, but not too bad.
The uh, Felpro folks were uh, kind enough to include the O-rings for the uh, fuel lines right there because the old ones were definitely uh, shot. Oh, and another thing too, if you need more room, you know, to stand when you're putting that manifold in, is uh, you can take this uh, assembly out here and it just slides in. Basically, it, it pulls out. I'll show you the bracket. Here's the bracket, so you can see how it slides off there, just that way. And it actually, you'll have to maybe pry it out a little bit from the wall here. And as you slide it towards the engine, it comes right out. Almost ready to reinstall the, uh, the intake manifold. Uh, just a couple of things left to do is uh, going to replace this here uh, quick disconnect because they have a tendency to break. Uh, going to replace it with a steel one here. The, uh, this one happens to be uh, a Dorman quick disconnect. And also, um, I'll tighten this down later, remove the throttle body because it'll just help because you can get your fingers in here when you're actually holding up that manifold while installing it. That's a good place for a grip. And then there's uh, inside the block here we've got the uh, basically these four studs we're going to use as guides. Basically you can just take a bolt, cut the head off of it, and uh, you know make them about oh, two inches long and then uh, put a score on this end so that you can remove it with a screwdriver once it's down in there. The guides will help a lot. You don't really need to use all four. Two are actually probably enough. Maybe one in the back, one in the front. Diagonally. Anyway, put that back in. So we're going to use probably four for the uh, installation. So next, uh, we'll uh, put the RTV on. Run it along. Run a bead along here. Run a bead across the back. I uh, put a thin coating. Uh, the uh, the instructions from Felpro say they actually put them on dry, but I like to put a very thin uh, thin coat on on the bottom and on the top of the gaskets, and that's about it getting close to uh, getting ready to put this in. I'm just going to clean up the uh, take a wire brush and clean up the uh, eight intake bolts uh, manifold bolts before we put it in. That's about it. Get this get this baby put in. Well the manifold bolts clean up pretty good with a wire brush so uh, these look like they're in very good shape so Definitely going to reuse these instead of putting new ones in. Then, of course, putting some blue Loctite on here is definitely a, a must before you put them in. Keep them, keep them secure. All right, so you can see here the uh, last step here, torquing the bolts down in three steps, and they talk about inch pounds there, which. I have it cross reference to the uh, foot pounds on the bottom. Four foot pounds first, then eight, then eleven. And then in a crisscross pattern. We're on the second step right now. And then we're going to let it sit for now ten minutes before we actually torque it down to its final eleven foot pounds. 
After the intake manifold is uh, torqued down to the 11 inch pounds, uh, putting everything else back together goes fairly quickly. There's a gotcha though, and I want to talk a little bit about that. So, you know, you have everything back together and you put your straight edge on your distributor cap and you've lined it up with the marks so everything looks good there but you start it up and it runs like hell what's the problem you know you you mark your distributor cap okay you know well it's very simply you see the way it's lined up right now it's incorrect because I have the straight edge on the wrong side of the line that I used to mark it I actually had the straight edge on this side here so you see how far off it is now it's not even close to those two marks so it's actually that far off it's quite the gotcha so you have to remember what side you put that straight edge on that lot this side the right side of this line here or the left side of that line in my case the right side fits down flush so you can see that this needs to be definitely turned counterclockwise to line up with those marks I had put on there. So it's a gotcha. Remember what side you put that straight edge on. Now if we look at the uh, lifter valley wall, I'll try to focus down in here. Made a pretty good bead there. It's looking good down there. I, I like using this here, uh, the right stuff here, in the uh, caulk tube. Makes uh, applying it's thick stuff, but uh, definitely makes applying it to the uh, applying that bead to the walls a lot nicer. Well, we're going to try to start it. I'm going to take my uh, Lucky Four Leaf Clover Chocolate. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Get my safety glasses on. Hey, ready? Yep. Hey, Eddie. Yeah. Hmm, that's not good. That's two times. Here we go, try it again. Okay. Uh oh. Do we forget something? Well, I had tucked a hose up here on the firewall, which I had forgotten to put back on, so hopefully that's going to be the problem. Connect that back in. That looks like that would create quite the vacuum leak. So I'll put that on. We'll see if it starts. Well, here we go again. Connected it up. We'll see if it starts. Well, it starts. Just see if it runs. Ready? Was it? Yes. Okay, excellent. Well, leaving that vacuum booster hose off right there really caused a little bit of a scare for me when it would start but not stay running. Anyway, once that was connected back up. It started up fine, stayed running, and uh, it's looking good so far. No leaks, it's all good. The only thing left to do at this point is change the oil. I'm actually doing that right now. And uh, it's, it's pretty black. I'll take it out and you'll see how black that is. But that's to be expected after 
doing all the work on this. Replace the oil filter in the oil and uh, should be good to go. Now you can see how dirty this oil is from replacing that uh, manifold. <laughs> That's pretty black. These are the plastic gaskets that came with the vehicle. You can see how distorted it is on the ends here, especially where the coolant goes through.